So finally, we get to our main topic, which is EQTL analysis. We've covered all the types of data we need, their relative formats. So visually, what we're really trying to find is this. This is a toy example, and this is a very ideal case. So as you can see, um, in each of these uh, bar plot, uh, each of these bar plots, you can see that different uh, individuals, numbers of individuals, have different copies of the allele. So we start with AA and then AT and then TT. And um, usually, since we're looking, uh, since T is the minor allele, in A, we have 140 individuals here that have the AA uh, gene type, and um, their expression is relatively low for this gene. However, as we get increasing numbers of the T allele, for example, AT, there's higher expression, and those who are homozygous TT um, have the highest gene expression. And we're looking for this type of linear trend between uh, the number of alleles someone has and uh, their gene expression. So, the y -axis would be on here? oh, yeah. So the y-axis here is uh, gene expression, usually adjusted for all the covariates that I was just mentioning, but. Um, Generally, it's a measure like uh, that will be probably explained the, the another more in depth in another video. But um, there are measures like FPKM, TPM. Um, I believe those are the two major ones. Those yeah. Uh, it's okay if you don't know. Sorry. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that would be difficult. He knows. What are they? Kind of fragments per kilo base million. Yeah. And okay. So that's, those have to do with the number of. Yeah, they take a okay. variety of right? Uh, FPKM takes a good account of genes. The gene length and TPM, yeah, okay. Sorry, just... No? It's okay. Um, all right. So, all right. So, yeah, uh, we do... This is really what we're trying to find um, visually. It could be an inverse relationship as well, uh, where the gene expression goes down with the number of alleles you have, but all in all, we're trying to find a linear relationship between the number of alleles and the gene expression. So not to get bogged down by the math, but I think this is as much math as I'm going to go into. Uh, linear regression uh, for this type of thing uh, uses this equation down here where the genotype is based on um, the gene expression plus some covariates. And uh, this is tested for uh, a genotype um, across all individuals versus a single gene across all individuals and then the covariates across all individuals. And this is done in a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, and this, when, they, when we do this, since it's a one-to-one -one test for every uh, genotype and expression uh, combination, we have to do some multiple, correcting, uh, multiple testing correction. And usually that's in the case of Bonferroni correction or, um, or family-wise error rate or FDR. Um, or, sorry, yeah, FDR. So these things are uh, explained in the p-values in FDR video, but um, they actually help set the thresholds for what we call an EQTL. So really what we're trying to find is that, that the coefficients for the expression um, on the genotype is significantly different than zero. And we can use a bunch of different tests, including things like an F-test or other tests, to try to see whether the, uh, the coefficient on the expression is um, significantly greater than zero for a specific genotype. Um, one very last thing that you might commonly hear when we're talking about EQTL analysis is cis-EQTLs versus trans-EQTLs. So, um, cis EQTLs, uh, cis meaning the region close by, uh, is usually defined as the region surrounding a gene. So a very common convention is to use one megabase um, upstream and downstream of the gene. So upstream being starting from the TSS and downstream uh, beyond the end of the, uh, the three prime UTR. And any variants that fall within this region um, that uh, pass the tests that was described on the previous slide uh, are considered cis EQTLs. And trans EQTLs are simply the opposite. So anything that's beyond that one megabase window around a gene or that's on a completely different chromosome, those are uh, called trans EQTLs. What's the TSS and what's the three prime UTL? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. The TSS, uh, sorry, the question was there's uh, what's the TSS and what's the three prime UTR? Um, TSS is the transcription start site, so that's where 
uh, the RNA starts to be transcribed. Uh, so that's usually denoted in a lot of um, schematics by an arrow. And uh, the three prime UTR is the region at the end of the gene that's untranslated, hence UTR untranslated region. And that's basically the end cap on the end of the uh, end of the translated region of the gene. And so. just to recap, translation is when you change um, RNA to a protein. Transcription mm -hmm. is when you change DNA to RNA. Right. Okay. So I think that covers everything on EQTL analysis, the basics of EQTL analysis. Hopefully in the future we'll talk about um, other finer details of this, such as imputation and um, reasons why we have to account for minor allele frequency and things like Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. But thank you everyone for listening. Hope